And so then Phoebe had those that were already in Jerusalem, okay? So you see how the numbers increased. There were citizens that were already in Jerusalem. And then six, he had an enormous amount of people along the roadside. For you know what happens when the word spreads, everybody gathers and everybody wants to hear the good news. They want to see, you know, who this powerful man of God is. So it is said that here he has this crowd that is around him. They've gathered and they, of course, everybody did not come uh, because they were excited about a relationship with God. We talk about that all the time. They just needed to see this man who, who you know, had the power to give sight to the blind, the, the man who had, to, had the power to make the dumb hear. You know, some of us hear, but we don't hear. Some of us see, but we really don't see. So, so people wanted to actually see who this man of God was. So now it was Jesus' time to actually take authority and take his rightful role that he was assigned in the first place. So he decides, this is my time to go in Jerusalem. So the Bible says that he accepted the homage, in other words, the honor that the people, you know, were going to give him now. Because if you notice in all of the other texts that you read, you will see that he took no glory, no credit. He always gave the credit to the Father. He said, nobody is good. Nobody, don't call me good. Call the Father good. He took no credit for anything that he did. He gave it all, gave all the glory back to God. So now he goes into Jerusalem. He's preparing himself. The Bible says that prior to that, he had no transportation. He, he walked to different places. That He wasn't caught up in material things. And he made the sacrifice of not getting so consumed up in things and materialism and, you know, the things we get caught up in. You know, some of us don't want to come to church because we're cleaning our cars. Some of us don't want to come to church because we've got to watch the house. Some of us won't want to do certain things because, you know, we have to make sure that we have everything in place, okay? But Jesus was, he was, his time was short and he had to make sure that the message was given. He had already done wonderful things and, you know, he began to minister. He had taught the disciples how to live, how to walk, how to talk. So his time was very, very short. The Bible says that, you know the story, you know the story. The Bible says that he rode in on the donkey. Let me say that, okay? The scripture says something else, okay? But he rode in on this. Why did he give the instructions? Why did he ride in on a colt? Because the colt represented something special. The colt represented, you know, sacredness. The colt represented service. The uh, colt represented a, a, bird, a beast of burden. So he comes in on this colt. Yet he rides in Jerusalem on this colt, a beast that had never been ridden upon. You know, when, you know in the ancient days when they... Uh, sacrificed animals or when they used an animal for sacred things it was an animal that just wasn't used you know just, you know just wasn't worn it was an animal you know that was fresh that's what that animal was and that's what they required so now he rides in but when he rides into Jerusalem he rides in because the cult represented humility the cult represented a king riding in yes but in humility a king of peace riding into Jerusalem. So he rides in on this colt because usually kings, when they rode in, they rode in on a stallion. And when they rode in, they rode in declaring, I'm going to have war with you. And so he says, I've got to ride in and let them know that I'm coming in peace. However, the people missed the mark and they could not understand what Jesus was doing. The Bible says, as he prepares himself, here the people are happy and they're excited about him coming into Jerusalem. The Bible says that they cut down palm trees. As a matter of fact, he lifts up palms in, in, in Luke. He lifts up, the, John rather, lifts up the palms. The rest they cut down, they said that they cut down trees. And the Bible said they spread them in the way. Spread them in the way that he might come in. They were worshiping him as he was coming into Jerusalem. And the Bible says that as Jesus, can you imagine? I can't imagine. I can't imagine the anguish, the anguish here. This was his last week on earth. And as he gets closer and closer to Jerusalem, uh, not that, that, that he could not see from his divine aspect, but he was looking from the human aspect that he had. As he nears closer and closer to Jerusalem, watching the crowds, 
as he observes the crowds, he see all walks of people in the crowd. He see all manner of people in the crowd. He see all thoughts in the crowd. And he knew that out of all the anxiousness and out of all the excitement that was there in Jerusalem, he knew that something was wrong in Jerusalem. Something was wrong in Jerusalem. As he gets closer and closer and began to go into Jerusalem, he observed the people. Yes, they were saying, you know, Hosanna, Hosanna, which means save us, save us now. They misunderstood why he was coming into Jerusalem. He, go, he goes into Jerusalem, and the Bible says as he watches, as he observes, he wept over Jerusalem. He cried over Jerusalem. Well, the Savior's coming in. Why does he cry? Yes, he has emotions. He has feelings. Did you know that? Do you know that when we transgress and do things wrong, Jesus has feelings? Do you know when you do not obey his will, Jesus has feelings? He goes into Jerusalem and he weeps over the condition. He cries and he makes that declaration. If you would have just, just obeyed the prophets and all of those that gave you word after word, that preached to you down through the years, if you would have listened, open your ears, open your eyes, if you would have just obeyed, I would have taken you as a hen takes her little baby chicks and put them under my wings. And why is it that you did not listen? He weeps. And he cries as he continued to go in Jeru into Jerusalem, weeping and crying. He understood three things about Jerusalem. After all this time, after all those centuries of the word of God, after all those centuries of sin in the word, after all, let me just go a little further, after all those years of spending time in church, after all those years of coming to service after all those years of worshiping God or acclaiming to worship, after all those years of hearing testimony, after all those years of shouting in the church, after all those years, they were blinded to the real reason as to why Jesus came. One, they thought he was coming to set up a regular rule on the earth, a kingdom. They thought he was coming in as a warrior to fight their battles for them. Don't you know that there are some battles that, you know, you've got to straighten some things out. Yes, the Lord could, but there are some battles that you've got to straighten out for yourself. Isn't that right? If you started it, you ought to finish it and cut it off. You ought to work it out and fix it if you started it. Isn't that right? All right. They thought he was coming in to set up an earthly kingdom. They thought that he was coming in to destroy all of their enemies and they were yet not doing what he said. They thought that he was coming to overthrow the Roman government. That's what they thought. I know it's a little historicity. I know that. But that's the scripture, okay? They thought he was coming in to set up rule and they would have a master. But I wonder would they have served that master? I'm talking about Jesus, not me, but the master. Would they have served him like they should have served him? And so they, 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 did, they misunderstood what it was really all about. And so there were some individuals that were around that were kind of disturbed at his presence. Amen? You had those rulers. Now, isn't this something how, how the church works sometimes? You know, they had those rulers who were there. You had the Herodians where the ruling party, they were afraid uh, because Jesus was causing a disturbance in the community. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that in one area of text, they said that the world has gone after him. And yes, they had because these millions that were there came because Jesus was coming to town. They understood who was coming to town, but they did not understand his real purpose. He did not come to overthrow the government, but he came to give them peace that they had never had. He came to give them relationship that they had never had. Before, they were always under the Roman rule. 
They were always under what everybody said do. They were always, you know, under that legal whip that kept them in one place, although they perhaps wanted to get to others. Now, that doesn't say that there weren't believers in the camp because there were many believers. There were many believers that followed Christ. But even some of those believers, the Bible said in earlier part of the text, they walked away because they could not handle Jesus and what he had to say. They could not handle the hard sayings of Jesus Christ. And so I know that sometimes we can't always understand the scripture and the heart sayings, but he said, follow after me anyway because I'll give you revelation as to what I'm saying and what I mean if you would just pay attention. But all this time they rejected, too, they rejected Christ. They rejected what he had to say. They rejected the prophets. As a matter of fact, the Bible said that those very leaders killed the prophets. And you know they did because he gave reference to uh, the prophet Zechariah who was killed between the porch and the altar. These leaders would get upset when somebody would rise up when their authority was threatened. Jesus was not coming to threaten their authority. All he wanted to do was set things right. He said, I didn't come to, weigh a do, to come to do away with the law, but I came to fulfill the law. I came to fulfill the promise of the Father. You have the law, but the law cannot preserve you and keep you. The law cannot keep you from doing things because you're naughty by nature. You have some stuff in you that God himself has to deal with according to the Holy Ghost. So he says that I came to give you some peace. I came that you might understand that it's important that you have relationship with me and that you get the power of the Holy Ghost. I haven't gone yet, but I'm going to go and I'm going to come back and I'm going to make sure that I give you a stabilizer in your life called the Holy Ghost. They didn't understand that as they walked in, as he continued to walk in. And the Bible says, you know the rest of the story, as he goes in, he starts to, 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 to cause problems. He goes into the church, the temple, if you will. He goes into the temple. As a matter of fact, I was doing one realm of study and it said that what he did, he stood over on the edge in the temple and he kind of watched what was going on. Jesus is watching us, y'all. He's watching what we do. He's watching how we live. He's watching how we pay attention. He's watching all those things. He's not blind. Amen. And so he said that he stood on the side and he kind of watched and observed the conduct and the behavior of those people in the temple and in the church, in God's house. And he observed what they were doing. And after a while, he became angry, the Bible said. What he did, he went, in the, he, went, he went up to those individuals because they were doing things that was not right. Now, we know that they were money changers. They were taking advantage of people. They were doing things that they should not do in the house of the Lord. And I know we have different views on what should be done and what shouldn't be done in the house of the Lord. I know that, but we want to make sure that we keep the Lord's temple holy. Isn't that right? Not only the church holy, but this temple right here holy. Amen? So he starts trouble. You know, this was opposition. You know, they had been doing fine because people were scared to talk up. People were afraid to say something. People were afraid, you know, to challenge those leaders because they had the authority and the power to kill them. But Jesus wept over the situation and over the circumstance. And one of my thoughts was, how does Jesus view us as we're here praising the Lord and as we're glorifying the Lord and how is he weeping or is he rejoicing because of his people, because they love each other, because they care for each other? What does he see when he comes into Jerusalem, United Holy Church? What is he observing over in the corner? What does he see in Mary Jackson? What does he see in James Chris? What does he see in Deacon Blackwell? What does he see in the congregation? Is he weeping because of some of the conditions of men's heart? Is he weeping because somebody have been coming to church for 30 years and are still empty? Somebody has been coming to church for 40 years and still lost. Somebody have been coming to church for 30 years and still don't know the Christ, the anointed one. Somebody has been coming to church and haven't connected to the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody has been coming to church bored and somebody has been dragging the church like God owed them something. He wept over the condition of the people. Somebody gets impatient in service. Want to go home in an hour? Go home. I've got to stay. Under 
got to stay. I've got to stay. I've got to stay. He wept, wept that the opposition was looking and observing. He got a lot of folk following him. We got to do something about this man. We got to kill him. We got to shut him up. Got to shut him up. He wept the very people that were ready to kill him. He had to die for. I'm not about shot. The very people that sought him. Here he walks in Jerusalem knowing that they had plotted his life outside and inside. Plotted his death, rather. Outside and inside. Weeks. But let me just go a little further. Okay, the Bible didn't say this. Okay. After a while, Jesus knew he had to drop those tears, square his shoulders. Daddy, Daddy, help me, Lord. Mm. Help me out, God. I've got a whole week to deal with issues. i got a whole week's journey to deal with these folk so master help me drive my tears away square up my shoulders and follow through with what you told me to do oh yeah i'm gonna stop y'all because i know we gotta go oh god but you see the preaching of the gospel is good to me because it changed my life one day squared up his shoulders and said, Father, give me my strength to do what I have to do this week. I know the journey is not going to be easy, but leave, let me leave this human, this human part of me aside and let me walk in my divinity. Let me walk in that authority that you have given me. Squared up his shoulders. And the Bible says during that week, yes, other things happen. And I won't bother with it because other preachers have to come and preach it this week. But nevertheless, the Bible said he goes on during that week. And he goes on that journey. But here is the thing that bothers me more than anything. The Bible says when he got to Gethsemane, when he went to pray, he told those three powerful disciples, sometimes you have people that walk with you. But sometimes they're not connected to you. They tell you that they love you. But they're not connected to your spirit. The Bible said he goes in the garden to pray. He kneels on his knees and pray. He's feeling the anguish because he gets closer and closer to the cross. And that cruel death of the cross. He gets there and he prays in Gethsemane. Gethsemane. He told Peter, James, and John, he said, now, I've got to go pray, disciples. I need you to watch while I pray. The Bible says he goes to Gethsemane, and he goes in prayer by himself. He had to get by himself. There are times when you have to get by yourself, cut everybody's voice off, and only hear what the Lord is saying to you. You can't always listen to what everybody's saying. But when the Father speaks to you, he tells you the right thing. The Bible said the first time as he prayed, he went back and those disciples fell asleep. Lord, have mercy. That was disturbing to Christ. Can you imagine him saying, oh my God, I thought my disciples were keeping me covered with prayer. But they were consumed with their own flesh or in their own flesh. They were caught up in their sleep. Bible says he went back to pray again, came back, they were asleep again, sleeping while he was praying. I preached a message one time, how can you sleep at a time like this? You better wake up, open your eyes, Lord have mercy. Third time he goes to pray, he comes back and they were sleeping again. That something is wrong with that. But he said, it's all right, sleep on my disciples. I've got a job to do. I've got to complete my work. The flesh, is, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The Bible says that ultimately, you know he was betrayed. Nevertheless, let me get back to where I was. He dried up his tears and walked like a soldier preparing himself for the cross. And the Bible said one of his very own 
Lord, have mercy. Don't you fall out because your disciples talk about you. Don't you fall out because your disciples betray you. Don't you fall out because your friends talk about you. Don't you fall out because they say bad things about you. Jesus said, I know my betrayer is before me. As a matter of fact, he's so slick and so cool that he's going to give me a kiss. Isn't that amazing? Oh, Lord, he gave me a kiss. But Jesus knew who his enemy was. You've got to know your enemy. Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yeah, you do. You might not say anything, but you know your enemy. Hey, be cool about it. Lord, have mercy. Because the Bible said when a man's ways please the Lord, he'll make your very enemies be at peace with you. That's what he said. So Jesus said, that's okay. I've got a job to do for my master. I'll wipe those tears away and square my shoulders and do the job. But let's not, let's not allow Jesus to look at Jerusalem and weep over us because we're not doing what the master said do Lord have mercy come on my brother come on walk with me come on walk with me come on my sister walk with me come on and walk with me come on come on come on and walk with me come on my deacon and walk with me Lord, have mercy. Come on, my yoke fellas, and walk with me. Come on and walk with me. Because Jesus is looking at Jerusalem. Come on and walk with me. Come on, my brother. Come on and walk with me. The Lord has a work for you to do. You come on and walk with me. There's power in his word. Come on and walk with me. Come on and walk with me. Jesus is watching. He's watching. He's watching what we do. He's watching what we say. He's watching who we pick up on the journey. Yes, he is. I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Come on and walk with me. Come on and walk with me. You don't have to be a member, walk with me. That's all right. Come on and walk with me. Lord, have mercy. Jesus is watching. He's watching what we do. Yes, he is. So let's wipe his tears away. Come on and walk with me. Let's dry tears away. Sister Usher, look at the crowd. Look at the crowd. Look at the crowd. Look at the crowd. Come on and walk with me. Come on and walk with me. Come on and walk me. Walk in authority. Walk in peace. Walk in love. Walk in fellowship. Walk in unity. Come on and walk with me. You're too far behind. You're too far behind. Come on and walk with me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, come on. Keep up with me. Keep up with me. Keep up with me. I'm getting out of here. 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 I'm going away, but I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, ye may be there also. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. In my Father's house, there is a room for you. There's a mansion for you. Disciples, go in peace. I have to go my way. Yes, I do. I've got to go to the cross. I've got to go to the cross. Amen. Praise the Lord. Dry the tears away. Dry his tears away. Oh, God. Give the Lord a hand praise. God bless you. He's real. He's real. Yes, he is. Yes. No more weeping, Jesus. No more weeping, Jesus. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to live like I ought to live. I'm going to walk like I ought to walk. I'm going to talk like I ought to talk. Holy Ghost, 
consume me, consume me, consume me. The tears of the master. Tears of the master. Everybody's standing. Tears of the master. 